Hello, this tutorial is about taking an asset and bringing it into a game engine. So what you're going to need to do is uh, prep the asset and get it organized and ready to go. So right here I have this uh, vendor stall that I created. It's based on something that we've done in one of our previous tutorials. Uh, we had gone in and we had constructed a modular posts or we had created a set of posts, textured them, constructed this out of those, ran a cloth sim, created textures. Now, what I'm going to do at this point is I want to make only visible just the items that are going to go into the game engine. So my construction pieces here, I don't need them. So I'm going to select them, right click and say hide selected. This dummy object, I'm going to right click, say hide selection. I'm going to come over here and I want to select the high poly version of the cloth. I'm going to right click, hide that. So any high poly meshes you're going to want to hide, any construction or splines, any random pieces you have, you're going to want to get rid of those so that the only pieces you currently have visible are just the main pieces of your scene. So I could come up here and click select by name. That's going to show me all the different pieces I have. So right now this is made up, if I click and drag, you can see it's made up of 10 objects. In order for me to bring this into a game engine, one thing that would be helpful is if they were all made out of just one piece. Now that doesn't mean actually, you know, reconstructing it. It just means attaching them all together. Now a lot of them have random orientation points in different locations. One thing that's helpful at this point is to come over to create, go to box, and under keyboard entry, simply enter values of 100 for length, width, height, and then hit create. I'm now going to right click on that box and say convert to editable poly. That takes me over here to the modify panel. If I find my rollout for edit geometry, what I'm going to do is there's an attach button. I'm going to click on the attach list. Now at this point I've gone through and I've hidden every piece except for just the ones that make up this actual vendor stall. So I'm going to click on the first one and hold shift and click on the last one. So now they're all selected. When I click attach, they all become part of this new object box 01. I'm going to click on the box itself and delete it. If I come over here and get out of the sub object, let's look at move. I'm going to adjust the orientation to use pivot point center. Now all these objects, when I go to rotate them, will be based off of that orientation. Now this is really useful when you bring it into a game engine because at this point, let me just Alt W and then Z to zoom out in all my viewports. You can see now that my object is actually sitting at zero. This is where its orientation is when it's going to go into a game engine. If I look at the material editor at this stage, if you just look here, you can see in the navigator that there's multiple materials that make up the scene. All right, I have sort of some reference. My old Gladius is in here. Here's the two main ones. There's the wood posts and there's the tarp. Now, if I come in here and I'm going to use the eyedropper and I'm going to click on one of these polygons, you'll see over here that when I made a box and I attached those different elements, the wooden posts and the tarp, what 3ds Max did was it went ahead and it automatically made a multi sub object material for me. All right, it Max, an object with more than one material always has one of these, even if it's not visible inside the material editor. If you want to see how it's constructed on an object, you simply click pick material from object and then click on the object. So by making a box with no material and attaching those other objects, we've gotten this brand new multi sub object material that's ready to go. One thing that I find helpful myself is if I go into the materials themselves and name them alphabetically. So if I do a underscore, in this case, cloth, and I do B underscore wood, what this will help with is when I bring this asset into a game engine, the materials should come in in this same order. 
A for cloth, B for wood. Now, that's not always the case. Sometimes, uh, depending on the game engine, uh, sometimes they come in in random order. Sometimes there's orders I haven't quite figured out yet. Um, but I find that by going in and actually naming the individual materials like this, that does help me out when they come in so it's easier for me to know which material is actually coming into the game engine. Okay, so I've cleaned up my model. I've created a material. Let's give it a name. I'm going to call this Vendor Stall. And I like to put underscores in. Uh, game engines sometimes have a difficult time dealing with spaces. And so it's a good habit to use an underscore instead of a space. All right, so here I have my vendor stall. So at this stage, let's go to... I'm going to export it out. Now, I'm going to export this out of 3ds Max as an FBX file. That's a common file format that multiple game engines can read. One thing that's really helpful is if you put a second edit poly on. So I have an edit poly and there's an edit poly on top. If you don't put a second edit poly on there, Max is going to triangulate the model, meaning it's going to take all those hidden edges. If I go in here to edged faces, if I turn that off, right? Remember our objects are made out of multiple edges. If I export out my model without the edit poly on it, it's going to triangulate everything like this. And so I like to put a second edit poly on to avoid that. All right, so now we got our model. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to copy that name. I'm going to come over here to File, Export Selected. And now I want to go to that loca the location where my stall pieces are. So actually, I'm going to copy that. Go to that location. Now, you'll see inside this folder, right, inside my post folder, this is a working folder. There's a lot of different elements inside there. So I have two options here. I could just save the vendor stall in there and then try and remember what I did. Or I can make an additional subfolder. in order to help myself stay organized, All right? Why don't we go ahead and we'll just save it into that folder. Save. Okay. All right. So now that asset's all ready to go. One thing that we're gonna wanna do in addition to that is we kinda wanna grab its textures. View, extra large. Okay. So inside here, vendor stall FBX file. The other thing I'm going to need the textures for it. So uh, the wood posts are already in here and notice that I have gone through and I've renamed them. All right, it's posts underscore BC. I've simplified down the names. Let's, I'm going to right click here and say sort by type. That way you can see my max files, my PSD files where I've worked on the different textures. There's my reference and then here's my various textures. So here's my tarp. It's already been renamed, right? I have my pack texture, my base color, my normal, and then I also have my opacity as well. So uh, we can take those. I'm going to take those tarps and I'm going to move those into that subfolder, right? I just drag them over. So here you go. There's the tarp. There's the stall. If I go back to the post, right? There is the post that does sit inside there. I don't think I want to move that out of the post out of there though, because the posts are being used for multiple objects and referencing them. So I don't want to break that. You'll notice when I come over here to 3S Max, this guy's all set. All right, so I'm going to save here. Or that's kind of the end of prepping this object. Now you're going to want to do this with any other objects you have. Right? You'll want to do the same thing with uh, an object like uh, your banner or any other or the any other object that's made of multiple elements like this. Okay, so that's prepping an object for bringing it into a game engine, and then I'm going to make a separate tutorial for how game engines work.